My name is Zach Cagle. I'm the marketing product specialist for mid-range and high horsepower Massey Ferguson tractors. Today I want to show you around the Massey Ferguson 8700 S-Series tractors. This is our highest horsepower S-Series, ranging from 270 horsepower all the way up to 400 max engine horsepower. These tractors are proudly built heavy and powerful here in Jackson, Minnesota to meet the needs of your operation. If you're looking for a straightforward but precision equipped tractor, the Massey Ferguson 8700 S-Series tractor is the tractor for you. The Massey Ferguson 8700 S-Series tractor runs an 8.4 liter Agco power engine. This engine's been out in the 8700, 8600 series tractors for several years and we've had great performance and reliability out of it. This engine meets tier four final emissions requirements without the use of a diesel particulate filter. Our engineers have engineered this tractor to meet tier four final requirements by the use of diesel exhaust fluid through our SCR system and also a diesel oxidation catalyst, saving you time where you don't have to perform a diesel particulate filter regen or worry about that canister building up heat in the middle of your operation. Behind the 8.4 liter Agco power engine, you'll find the Dyna VT transmission. This is a continuously variable transmission and it works in perfect harmony with our Agco power engine. We use dynamic tractor management to manage that relationship and save you fuel and time. Let me put it to you this way to explain dynamic tractor management. For simple terms, let's say we're roading a large square baler behind this tractor and we start up a hill. You would hear the engine start to automatically raise an engine RPMs to produce more horsepower to pull that load up the hill and vice versa. When you crest that hill and you start down the other side, your 8700S series tractor in dynamic tractor management mode would automatically decrease those engine RPMs because that horsepower is not needed and you don't need to burn as much fuel. With the introduction of the 8700S series tractors, our Agco Power engineers made a few small but significant changes to the front cooling package of the Agco Power engine. Here you will see our easily accessible air filter. Here you'll find the condenser, this increased in size, the air to air intercooler, the transmission cooler, and then you'll see here we added an external oil cooler to help power those increased demands of implements requiring more and more hydraulic flow. Then you'll find our radiator here. We all know that each and every one of you out there farming, very few of you have perfectly smooth fields. This is why we put a suspended front axle under the front of the 8700S series tractor. You're dealing with terraces, you're roading them down the road, you're crossing pivot tracks. I could go on and on about the different bumps you deal with every day out there in your fields. But this tractor and the suspended front axle and your cab suspension that comes on the 8700S series tractor is going to make your day in the field a whole lot more enjoyable. Also standard on the 8700S series tractors are pivoting front fenders. These are available in the standard width or a wider width front fender depending on your conditions. Turning radius is a big deal, especially in row crop applications. As you can see here, our frame on the 8700S series tractor features a curved design. This allows the front wheel and front axle to turn very sharply, giving you a tight turning radius at the end of your headlands. Now that we're at the rear of the tractor, I want to point out a few key things. This is where the work gets done. These tractors are built heavy duty and they're also simple. Here you'll notice our six remotes. Each of these feature pressure relief valve on them. So when we're unhooking and hooking implements that may have pressure on them, we can do that and release the pressure very easily there. Also, just to mention, here's our power beyond and free flow return valves here. Our hydraulic system on this tractor features 54 gallons per minute of flow. This flow is dedicated to the rear remotes, meaning that we get a full 54 gallons per minute of flow. I'll also mention that our hydraulic reservoir is separate from our transmission. So let's say that something happens with one of our implements and let's say we blow a drive motor on one of our hydraulic motors we would only contaminate our hydraulic system. We would not get any contamination into our transmission. Optional on the 8700 S series is a heavy duty quick hitch. Down here, you'll see a category three draw bar. And here is our PTO. 
Optional with this tractor is a 540 six spline shaft or a 21 spline 1000 RPM shaft or a 20 spline 1000 RPM shaft. Also at the rear of the tractor, you'll notice our cab suspension shocks. This is a four point cab suspension system. There's three settings on it, an automatic setting, which the tractor will control for you based off conditions, and also a firm setting and a soft setting based off of your preference. The benefit of cab suspension is certainly when you're in rough areas. You couple that together with our suspended front axle, this tractor rides very well. Think about crossing over terraces, pivot tracks, whatever that may be, it's very important to have a smooth ride on those long working days. Making your life much easier when hooking and unhooking implements, we have here our three point controls, down and up. Here's our rear remote control. This is assignable to valves one through six through the Datatronic 5 monitor, meaning that we can control any of our rear remotes, one through six. This is nice if you have a hydraulic jack on a baler or an implement, you can plug that valve in and you can control that hydraulic jack when hooking and unhooking that implement. Finally, here is our PTO on and off switch. When we look at the rear axle of the Massey 8700, we offer two rear axle options, one being a short bar axle and also a long bar axle for those row crop or wide space configurations. Also from the factory, we offer rear and front duals, your choice. And when it comes to ballast, we can ballast this tractor all the way up to 39,000 pounds. We offer rear wheel weights as well as front weight packages to get there. We offer two light packages on the 8700 S series tractors. Our standard halogen light package, and if you're doing a lot of night work, I would recommend our LED lights. The LED work light package can turn night into day for you. These lights help with range and visibility as well as decreasing blind spots when you're working at night. Let me show you around the Massey Ferguson 8700 S series four post high visibility cab. First thing I wanna point out is two courtesy lights here. When you're working at night and you're in and out of the tractor, this is really nice to access, climb up the stairs of the tractor. Next, you'll notice a wide open entry. It's easy to get in and out of the tractor, plenty of room to access the cab straight into the seat. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes, bringing the dash with you so it's easy visibility and offering best in class comfort. Here you'll notice Standard on the 8700S series, the instructor seat. We've got it in the folded position here, seamlessly out of the way, and then it easily pops up here if you have an instructor with you. We offer two premium seat options on the 8700S series tractor. As shown here, we have the cloth seat, swivels, it's air ride. We can also adjust the bottom of the seat, the lumbar, built-in armrest, and it's also heated. Then we also offer a super luxe grammar seat. This seat has leather and it's an automatic adjusting seat. So it adjusts automatically to the weight of the operator. Now let me show you our deluxe armrest and also our Datatronic 5 monitor. The Datatronic 5 monitor is new to the Massey Ferguson 8700 S series tractor. It's a nine inch touchscreen monitor and it's got everything you need from tractor functions to your precision technology to your ISO bus as well as an integrated camera. This is our home screen. This is where we control all our tractor functions and this is what you'll view when you first start the tractor up. Over here we have some quick readouts. Like for example, I have this one set up to read our gallons per acre of fuel usage. I also have shown here is my cruise speed one, so I can quickly reference that. I have my slip percentage and I have my RPMs as well. Let's say we wanted to add another one. Let's say we wanted to add gallons per hour of fuel usage. Simply come here, add it, okay, and now we can have that here. These are all customizable, and as you can see, there's several different things that we can add here to quickly view and read out. Next, over here, we'll move to our H3 and H4 buttons. These are our hot buttons. We can simply change those here. We can go in here and change them. Let's say I want that to engage auto guide. Okay, now the H3 button will engage auto guide, and I can lock and unlock those buttons here. Moving up. As we talked about on the multi-pad, you'll see here you've got a valve you control. You can change that to your first remote, second remote, third remote, whichever one you want. 
And then at the rear fender, you'll be able to change which valve you control at the rear fender switch. So let's say we want to put that on valve two. Okay, now when we go around to the rear fender, we'll be able to adjust that valve from back there. We can also lock and unlock our timers down here and hydraulics. Moving down here, also quick readouts. You can see differential lock here, four wheel drive lock here telling you what's engaged and what's not engaged. And down here, you'll see all of your valves. So you've got six valves on this tractor and you can change all of these by simply clicking on them. So if we want to adjust our flow rates, this is where we would come to. If I wanted to adjust my negative side to 50%, I simply just scroll the button here, drop it on 50%. Or if I wanted to sync the two together, I can get them both to 50%. Down here, we can change from a aggressive start to a gradual start on our hydraulics and also here we can set timers let's say I wanted to set my number two valve to run for two seconds there's where I do that or if I wanted to set it to continuous I simply hit this button here and when I engage that valve it'll run until I stop it over here you'll see your three point settings so this will give you a percentage of how high or how low and also your auto guide your PTO and uh, just this is your main screen. This is going to give you all the information you need. The 8700S series is available with Trimble or Novatel receivers. These are available from the factory. And as you can see here in our Datatronic 5, we still have our readouts for our tractor functions. We have here a red button indicating that we are not on a line. And when you are steering on a way line, you will have a green button there so you know exactly when and when you're not engaged on auto guide. Here we can pause and start our task controller. Here we can turn section control on and off. These are our nudge left and right buttons. We can focus or pull out on our screen. Here it tells us what way line we're on. Here it tells us our correction services and here it tells us what kind of signal strength we have. Over here on the right hand side we have our quick readout buttons. If we wanted to start a new field or start a new way line or, or whatever we want to do here, go to our settings of our implement, we can click here and this is where we would adjust all of our settings, whether it be width or whatever that may be, set up a new one, our distance back from our drawbar, our triggers start on PTO on. So when I turn the PTO on, the tractor would start mapping. Down here I want to mention a really interesting thing, our go mode. Our go mode is a simple, easy to use method to start a way line without having to set up a whole lot of extras. All you do is click that button, select the way line you want, the monitor will give you steps to take, and in no more than three clicks, you have a field set up and you're ready to start steering the tractor. Here, let me tell you about our ISO bus. So our ISO bus is capable of running any of our AGCO implements, as well as many other brand name implements. Here's our camera. If we had a camera, say for example, we wanted to watch a large square baler and otter stack, we can put that in here, no problem. And then the last thing I wanna mention is our split screen capability. So let's say we wanted to watch our tractor functions here, we could do that. Or down here, if we wanted to change our screens up, we could simply choose a different screen. Let's say that I wanted to put my hydraulics on this page. So now I can view all of my hydraulics very simply over here on this side of the screen, and I can watch my guidance screen on this side. Let me show you the 8700S series deluxe armrest. This comes standard on all of our 8700S series tractors. It makes your life a lot easier. Everything that you need to control the tractor is located right here at your fingertips. First, let me show you our multi-pad joystick. This is how we control the speed of the tractor. So with our Dyna VT transmission, obviously we can get to any speed that we want, even down to the 10th. If we wanna go faster, we simply push forward on this multi-pad. If we want to slow down, we simply pull back. Here you'll find easy to push, PTO on and off, automatic engine preset speed. Here's our three point hitch, down, neutral, and up. Our cruise speed one and cruise speed two, these are easily adjustable. Let's say we're going across the field and we want to go five miles an hour pulling a planter, we can simply engage that. If we want to get to the headlands and slow down a little bit, we could set that speed at four miles per hour and we simply press that button. Here's our hydraulic valve. This is assignable to one through six to control any of our functions on a single valve. 
Then here's our headland function. This can be engaged to engage auto guide or a sequence that we set up in our Datatronic 5. And finally, this is how we shuttle the tractor. I'll also mention that the multi-pad can be set up to be ISO compliant, meaning if we're running triple mowers, we can set this up however we want it to raise, lower, or fold our three-point. Let me show you how you control your six rear remotes. So here is our number one remote. This is our joystick, okay? We can go negative or plus for number one, and we can go plus or negative for number two. This makes our most commonly used functions really easy. All we have to do is, is push and push back. We also have the engage constantly, just push forward or that can be float. Here's three, four, and five, and then up on our multi-pad is number six. Here's our three-point linkage control as well, up and down and neutral. Here's our preset engine speed A and B. Here's how we change the ranges on our transmission and we can set this button to engage auto guide or a headland function. This is how we unlock and lock our hydraulics and this is how we engage our ISO on our multi-pad. Here is our throttle control to raise and lower our engine RPMs. Back here you'll notice our dynamic tractor management function. This is how we engage it and this is how we turn it off. Next, this is where we adjust our cruise speed 1 and cruise speed 2. To increase it, we dial forward and decrease, we dial backwards. And of course, this is cruise speed 2. And this is how we change from lever to pedal mode. What that means is, is if you were unloading a grain cart into a tractor and trailer, you might put it in pedal mode. And basically all you do at that point is just press down on your pedal and the tractor will gradually creep forward. Then if we change it back to lever mode, at that point we would use our multi-pad to increase and decrease the speed of the tractor. Finally, here I want to show you our PTO. To engage our PTO, we push it on. To turn it off, we push it to the rear position and also our automatic function, meaning that when we raise our three-point hitch, for example, the PTO would turn off and when we lower it, the PTO would turn on. And finally, our remote number six is here. To keep things simple on our armrest, we locate all of our functions that may not be as commonly used on our B-pillar. This doesn't impair our visibility, but it also keeps buttons that are not as commonly used out of the way. As you can see, we got our headlights, our four-wheel drive, our differential, our auto steer, and our cab and front suspension settings here. As we move up, you'll see that we have our ignition switch here, our three-point settings here, so this would be our max height, our rate of drop, our draft control, and here we have our three-point suspension. Next up, you'll see we've got our 540, 540 Eco, 1000, 1000 Eco, and our neutral selection. And finally, here's where we control all of our work lights, as well as our beacon lights. I could go on and on about the many features on the 8700 S-Series tractor. They're all straightforward, dependable, simple to use. But if you want to know more about this tractor, I would encourage you to go visit your local Massey Ferguson dealer or go to our webpage, MasseyFerguson.us.